Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 21 of Mostly Football. Wow, what a wild week. <laughs> NFL, baby. Only two undefeated teams remain, Nate. The Miami man. Dolphins and the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm becoming a big fan of the Eagles, man. They're As helping. you should be. They're, they're helping me out in all of my leagues. We got plenty of news tonight. Uh, don't think just because we're talking only NFL and college football that there isn't plenty to talk about. Because I tell you, storylines abound. A little bit of NBA to kick the night off with, and then it's going to be all football from there, baby. You know what time of year it is. It is mostly football. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my co-host Nate with the sound effects as always. Sir, it was a great weekend. I turned 32. How did you celebrate your my birthday weekend? I didn't do anything, honestly. I did did nothing. Daughter had a soccer game. Uh, okay. She played great. She's she's getting a whole lot better at soccer. Uh she's had she has three goals for the year so far. Wow. Yeah. So we we're we're improving. We're getting better. We're getting better. Hey, well tell her I said keep up the great work. I mean, are you coaching her or what? I mean, I'm not coaching her, but we we practice we practice a lot <clears throat> before and after games and we do it. With, I'm trying to get her cardio together, so we run a lot after practice. So, did you play soccer when you were a kid? No, I ain't playing no soccer. Soccer is Never? probably part of most. Soccer is probably the biggest bullshit sport ever. It is literally. I'm not fit to sit here and run up. Dude, I, we scrimmage. We so we had a scrimmage. Their first game of the year, we missed because they they changed the schedule and didn't tell anybody, not the coaches, but the fucking the park or whatever. So we decided to have a scrimmage against the the girls and the parents. Big fucking mistake. Soccer's bullshit. There's a lot of excessive running back and forth. If the ball oh, so you, got go your, out, you got your rump handed to you one time and decided soccer sucks. <laughs> no, soccer sucks in general. But this shit was bullshit. Like oh, it is a lot of balding it. men and girls just taking you up and down the soccer field, and you decide, you know oh. what, this board sucks. That was the worst shit ever. The running is the running is bullshit. Like literally, it's just like I actually I got to a point where I just stopped running. I'm just gonna play defense. I don't know, man. There's nothing like uh, strapping on a pair of shin guards and just really giving that thing. A I didn't good have boot. any shin guards. I didn't have cleats. I was in regular street shoes. In sweatpants. Oh wow! Well, that's all systemic, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, that's great. I'm glad that she's having a good time. You know, I mean, th- do you guys have to bring snacks? Is it like a uh, once a week yeah. you bring oranges but, or whatever? Well, uh, they have a snack schedule, so she's not till like uh, October 15th or 14th, somewhere around there. So each girl has their own week to bring a snack after the game. I don't know if you've seen, I mean, there's a there's a video floating around about how all foods are the same and you, you shouldn't treat, you know, certain foods as worse than others. Like you what? could eat you could eat donuts as much as you eat apples and you'll be just fine. <laughs> Have you seen that? No, I got to find that video. I'll just send it to you. That, that's for a different show, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this is, this is Please most send that to me. But yeah, um, let's kick this off. Talking a little bit of NBA here because we don't get too much into the NBA, especially this time of year. But I wasn't familiar with the storyline. I didn't even know DeAndre Ayton got benched in the uh, the finals last year, but apparently he did. And this is him talking about his new contract. Apparently he was questioned by a reporter um, how he feels about it. I haven't spoken on. No, I haven't spoken at all. Ever since the game. I haven't talked to a bunch of our guys. Um, as I said earlier this summer, like they, they needed a break from me, the gym, um, unless you were in the gym, like every day, 
I've had interactions with everybody, but talking to guys about deep stuff, there's a number of guys I haven't talked to. He's got his Even arm around Booker, really but not Aiden. I wouldn't come downstairs just because I wanted them to get a break from, from me. Huh. Well, that's not good when you sign a guy to uh, – how big is his contract? I don't know. It's more than he should. <laughs> Let's see here. From Brian Windhurst, Phoenix Sun center DeAndre Ayton um, on ESPN.com said he hasn't spoken with head coach Monty Williams since he was benched during a stunning Game 7 loss to the Dallas Mavericks in May. Um, Ayton – oh, not during the finals – Aiden had a tense summer with the Suns, signing a four-year, $133 million offer sheet with the Indiana Pacers before Phoenix matched using his restricted free agent rights. I haven't spoken to him at all ever since the game, as you just heard. Wow. So, this is dumb. This is extremely stupid. I don't know... The reason why the Suns signed, re-signed Aiton, and it was it was dumb on their part, was because they wanted to get something for him instead of just losing him and getting nothing in return. Yeah, I mean, apparently uh, the Pacers could have just signed him. Yeah, the Pacers the Pacers had him signed. So when I saw, when I initially saw this happen, this is like early in the summer. When I saw that they signed, him, I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm like, there's no way the Phoenix Suns is going to match this offer. That makes no sense. And then fucking an hour or so later, you see they didn't match the fuck. I'm like, what the fuck? Are you fucking so like, you serious? That makes no sense. Why did you resign him? He clearly didn't want to be there anymore. You clearly wanted to get rid of him because you were talking about trading him all fucking off season. And then all of a sudden you give him this contract that he really doesn't want. And you can see it in his face. And like I said, even when one for that media day, like they asked him, he was just so just, yeah, I got it done. He was there was no excitement. There was no man. I'm happy to be back. I'm this nothing. He was just like, yeah, they got done. And that was it. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the kind of passion and thrills you want out of your freshly uh, hundred three hundred thirty three million dollar player. <clears throat> he, 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 he don't want to fucking be there. Like, that's the thing. Like, you can't for I, that's the thing. Like, I don't understand why teams are forcing players to be there. Like, you don't clearly don't want to fucking be here. Just let him fucking go. Take that money elsewhere and put it towards somebody else you can afford. And guys are really learning how to leverage their teams now. They're just like on social media all the time, being like, Man, this team sucks. If I could play for anyone else, I literally would. Like it's not the it's not the way it used to be where teams can just keep guys under wraps. I mean guys can literally post their way out of town. It's kind of interesting. Absolutely. Like I don't know how fit and then I don't know how Golden State expects to keep the three guys they're trying to keep. Cause they want to keep Draymond, Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole. I'm like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Like I don't good luck with that though. Uh, let's move into some NFL news here. Some potentially very sad news, but lucky news here that Miles Garrett ended up being okay. Um, this from NFL.com. Browns DE Miles Garrett suffered shoulder bicep strains in crash status for week four uncertain. I think he might. I think he might be all good. Probably like two weeks on this one, just to get like rested. Hey, afternoon. Let's pull this video up here and uh, see what they had to say. Browns practice in the afternoon. I forgot how big his ears Suburban are. Cleveland. Got three Browns nerds here talking about Miles Garrett. Miles so let's Garrett hear what they got to say. And was later in a one-car accident. Uh, I mean, his car look at the ears on. Times. What's his and name? Siliano, them shits is huge. Well, Andrew, I am told that Miles Garrett <laughs> I get that. I mean, from the hospital just fly off the screen with those things. after that one-car accident. The good news here is that none of the injuries that Miles Garrett sustained are life-threatening. He is, however, undergoing further tests. My understanding of the situation here was that the roads were wet. Miles Garrett swerved to avoid an animal. He then overcorrected, lost control of the car. It did then flip multiple times. His agent, Nicole Lynn, put out a statement saying that Garrett had been... Okay, let me stop right there. I, as an animal lover, respect that. Nope. And I know you feel differently, 
But whether it's a deer or a chipmunk, I respect this man's passion for life. I do. I love animals. Leave me wrong. But I'm gonna run you fuck over. Period. Do I can't. Animals, I'm not. Do, I'm not all, gonna be, do all animals' lives matter, or do only some animals' lives matter? I am not gonna be doing 45 down the street, and then all of a sudden I got a fucking swerve. No, I'm not. You. It's gonna suck. It's gonna hurt me to my soul. But <clears throat> it's better you than me. It's expensive to fix this fucking car, and if I die, I, it, I can't. No, no, I gotta run you over. There was one time I was traveling down, I believe it was an interstate, in a big old pickup truck. And I absolutely crushed a turtle uh, that I didn't see until it was way too late. And the guilt, the guilt that still stays with me to this day <laughs> for absolutely annihilating that turtle just trying to make his way across the road. The guilt is bad. No, no, hear me, hear me out. Because there have been times where I've like been driving like down the street, like, it's like 30 miles, like a little neighborhood street, and there's like a squirrel or something that'll jump up. I'll slow down and I'll make sure I don't hit it. <laughs> but if I'm doing 40 or 50 down a fucking street, I'm sorry. You, you're going to have to meet Jesus. I, I can't help you. Now, I do have an uncle. We all have an uncle, right? Mm -hmm. I do have an uncle who is a little twisted and... You know, let's just say we've we've circled around the block to uh, to hit to hit roadkill sometimes just because he enjoyed the smell. Yo, I actually hit a skunk once, which don't ever you, you now skunks are a different story. It's exactly I would, what it was. I would avoid hitting skunks for the simple fact that when you when you run them over, that fucking smell stays in the car for like two or three days. Yeah, it's, 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 something about it's it. the worst shit ever. And it's like two or three straight days where you have skunk smell in your car. Let's see what, uh, let's finish up with Tom Pelissero here. I'm glad Miles is okay. Alert and responsive in the hospital while awaiting word on the extent of his injuries. Also Do you remember when he got punched by that guy in a Chevy Cobalt who just rolled up on him one day? Out of the vehicle and to the hospital. Just say, sitting in traffic, no some guy in a Chevy Cobalt just pulled up and punched him while belts, which is obviously had his window here. down. It caused the crash, still under investigation. Yeah, it's huge when you see the photos of what remains of the car wearing your seatbelt. You have to think is a huge reason that Miles Garrett was able to go home from the hospital last night. I have a problem. Hey, how about in that? Atlanta this weekend to play the Falcons. Shilling for big seatbelt, huh? I see how they do it over there at NFL.com. No, that's Come awesome. On. I'm glad he's okay. And uh, I want to yeah, see this he's... car. Oh, yeah. I wonder. I wonder oh, let's see if they show it. I don't think they do. No word at anyone's availability. More hmm. detail. Uncle, this is what bothers me the most. When you get big ass athletes who want to drive these tiny ass cars, listen, if you're 6'5, 260, 270, you shouldn't be in a Porsche. It's good for the environment. No, you shouldn't be in a Porsche. Okay. Find something that fits you. Okay. Oh, man. Don't, 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 no. That'd be, that's like Shaq riding. That's like Shaq driving a Ferrari. You shouldn't be doing it. Drive a I'm truck. Sure Shaq has several Ferraris. I'm sure he does. Get in the truck. Okay. Drive a truck, okay? Don't 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 sit in them some little ass Porsche and you. No, Miles Garrett should not have been in a fucking Porsche. I'm happy he's okay, but you don't put yourself in that situation. You need something with protection, because it's bad enough when you. As more than likely, he's probably going fast. Them shits fold like tin cans, and with you in it, no, no. Drive something that'll suit you. Drive something that suits your size and height. Well, I'll say this, you know, again, it's nice to hear a, a crash. It's not nice to hear a crash. Incident. Let me rephrase that. It's nice to hear that an incident involving a crash with an athlete with, you know, plenty of money to hire a driver. And I don't blame these guys for not hiring a driver. I'm not one of these guys who thinks that just because you have money, you should hire a driver. That's stupid. You got all the rights in the world to drive yourself. It's nice to hear a story involving a crash. That didn't involve, you know, oh, he was speeding or he was, he was uh, drunk, drunk you know, yeah. 
both those things, it's a, it's a relief. Life. He was trying to save a life. He risked his own life to save another life. You gotta hit the animal. Didn't think I could Mike. Didn't think I could like Miles Garrett more than I do, but I damn it, I do. You gotta run the animal over. Yeah, I know how you. I know how you are. That's just what it is. You gotta. You can't. I'm not sacrificing my car for no animal. Um, what do we want to? Oh, I know what we want to do here. Let's let's bring this video up. Um, because this is a good one here. <clears throat> let's watch the highlight of Jimmy Garoppolo he pulling is. his best Dan Orlovsky. Uh, Jimmy this Garoppolo is butt cheeks. Uh, this is on DenverBroncos.com. So I'm not stealing any copyrights here, YouTube. Let me play this. And uh, don't restrict me. You've been very good to me, by the way. What's up, and look great. Second and 10 from his own end zone. Oh, out of the end zone to safety. <laughs> and he throws a pick six. Stepped all the way out of the you end do end. that all in one play. Shall and we see that again? Play. Of course we shall. Like, who the fuck? With Jimmy Garoppolo. That's why they drafted Trey Lance. That's exactly why they drafted Trey Lance. All the way out of the end zone. It's a simple right. Gregory. That had to have been the absolute worst Sunday night game ever. Well, I'm not going to say ever. Probably top five. That shit was so boring. Russell Wilson looks like he he looks like he don't know how to play football. Like he forgot how to play fucking football. I, I don't know what's going on with the Denver's offense. Their offense looks shit. The defense is great. It was great last year. I don't know who said it, but props to whoever said this on YouTube. They said uh, props to Jimmy Garoppolo for putting his foot down on racism. <laughs> oh, this shit here, dude. Jimmy G is butt cheeks. He is trash. He is not <laughs> He's not a good quarterback. He's a game manager at best. Game manager. And the fact that the Niners season – is going to rely on him again. And there, Trent Williams went down, so he's out for at least a month. So that's going to be a fucking shit show. Yeah, that was bad. Indeed. That was bad. The defense, they struggled a little bit. I mean, they kept, they kept the Niners under, what, 10 points? They kept them at 10, so, I mean, that's good. But when you play, like, a real fucking team, you're going to have a problem. When you play the Rams – which they do next Monday, you have a fucking problem. Well, I mean, speaking of which, and let me bring up our uh, let me bring up my little blurb here. News, um, staying on the Broncos, you wanted to talk about Nathaniel Hackett and something they just did. Nathaniel fucking Hackett. This is how I feel about Mister Nathaniel Hackett. Oh, you suck. And I'm sure everybody in Denver feels that way. Nathaniel Hackett. This man. So, for all of you who don't know, Nathaniel Hackett probably is by far the worst head coach in the league right now. Could be. His first what first game of the year, you have he, Russell Wilson in Seattle. It feels like watching Joe Dirt. Like, I'm new. I don't know what to do. Exactly. He you you have Russell Wilson in Seattle. For whatever reason, you don't call timeout. You burn off almost 30 to 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then you decide to kick a long-ass field goal. And when now here we are. When funny on national television, you're, you're in for it. And here we are again. And then, and then week two, the fucking crowd was having to tell your quarterback, hey, dickhead, the clock is running. The whole stadium was counting down. On the clock. On oh, the that's my clock. favorite thing in football right now. Is I'm the like, Broncos are you fucking serious? Like, dude, them. what are you doing? So now here we are. Week three? Are we in week three? And Mr. Yeah. Hackett has to buy, has to hire Jerry Roseberg. He's an assistant who's going to be involved with time management and other aspects of the head coaching job. <laughs> You tell me you suck as a head coach without telling me you suck as a head coach. I mean, I ain't never heard Bill Belichick saying, "Oh, I need a, I need an advisor to help me with time management," or Sean Payton, or Bruce Arians. You fucking idiot. And look, 
I, I haven't been on the, you know, I haven't been perusing the, the major channels or anything today, but this could be like on the same level as the, uh, in Kyler's contract, him having to watch film, <laughs> like having to have a guy dedicated just to this is on that same level. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's, he it's, literally it's, has to, why? I'm like, why do you, as a head coach, you're on the fucking field. You can see the clocks. Why are you having these issues? And you have a veteran quarterback. If you had a rookie quarterback, I understand. You have a veteran, Russell Wilson, and you, for whatever reason, can't get the play calls in him, into him in time so he can get the fucking playoff. You're a fucking idiot. You're like, a fucking horrible quarterback. You almost wonder if it's a matter of doing too much. I mean, there's been plenty of instances where newer coaches come in for very experienced quarterbacks. I mean, you can think of Todd Bowles with Brady right now or plenty of other Mike LaFleur with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you, you come in and you just kind of let these guys run the show. You know, you don't have to he be was Aaron Rodgers' coordinator last year. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. I understand. <laughs> I'm not getting. It's not like it's not like he came from college. It's not like he came from some fucking pole dunk ass. The Michael Floor, by the way, I met Matt Floor. You get it. You are. You came from Green Bay. You had one of the best quarterbacks in the game. I don't understand. I was talking yeah. to. I was talking to a guy at work today, and and this is this is most definitely true. There are guys who are head coaches. And then there are guys who need to be coordinators. Nathaniel Hackett needs to be a fucking coordinator for the rest of his goddamn career. Dan Quinn's another one of those guys. Those are guys, they're great coordinators, but they suck as head coaches. Nathaniel Hackett sucks as a head coach. He won't make it two years in Denver. Unless somehow they magically turn this goddamn season around, which I highly doubt, he won't last two years in Denver. Yeah, this article by Michael David Smith. Um, on profootballtalk.nbcsports.com says the 66-year-old Roseburg last coached in Baltimore spending 11 seasons with the Ravens from 2008 to 2018. So this will be interesting to watch play out for sure. No, it's that I don't get it. I don't I don't get why you hired this man and he needs someone to help him manage the time you don't know how to call timeout you can see the fucking play you can see you see everything from the field you see the clock you see the play clock timeout dumbass dude so the monday night game that i was watching with first week with brady with uh when they were playing the seahawks peyton was sitting on like because you know eli and peyton got their thing that they do on espn yeah so it's like a minute left peyton's like timeout Time out. Time out. He called time out 40 fucking times <laughs> within that time frame. He was like, call time out. Call. So why they they so they get down and then they do this weird shit where they, they run the ball and it's like this is like a 60 something like a 64 yard field goal. I'm like, what the fuck? It's fourth and five. Take the fucking opportunity. You have Russell Wilson. Use him. Yeah, I mean, they use the timeout to think things over, and then I think it's what third down, and they go and they go ahead and send the field goal unit out. I mean, I think they could have ran another play. I mean, immediately after they ran the previous play, I heard Eli go, "I think you got to call timeout here, right, Pate?" Yeah, and, and they, they were, were like, "Call timeout." At that point, Pate was like, "Call timeout." <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. I was like, it, 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 for me, it's just like Denver's going to regret hiring Nathaniel Hackett. Because, and that's the thing for me is like, there's got to be a better way to um, determine who's going to be your next head coach. There's got to be a way, a better way to filter it. Because look at Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy, he's not, he's done in Dallas. That's, let's be honest. They're going to, Dallas is going to have a bad season. He's going to be fired next season. Yeah. It's, it's guaranteed. Nathaniel Hack is not going to last two years in fucking Denver. It was an ugly win over Houston last week, and it was an even uglier win <laughs> this Listen, past week. I mean, you can't, you can't 11 to 10. Ugly wins. Not in the division that you're in. You playing the Chargers, you got to play the, the Chiefs, 
You, no, I ain't gonna mention them because. But you know, three right now. No, I'm not mentioning them. They dookie. As uh, as Dominic Toretto would say, winning is winning. Not the Raiders. The fucking zero and three right now. They dookie. Okay. Straight yeah, zero and three is bad. Here's one um, on the Patriots that I think is pretty exciting. I can't wait to get into this because our loyal MFers will be very excited to watch your reaction to this. This article is about Mac Jones injury and some potential free agent quarterbacks the Patriots could be looking at. And Nate, you're never going to believe the photograph that first pops up on this article. I'm surprised. I'm sure you're going to surprise me. (laughs) That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This article from msn.com from from (laughs) boston.com the Patriots might need a quarterback. Here are a few alternatives to Mac Jones from Kerry Thompson. Did not bring a cam back. Uh, it's a picture <laughs> if you're only listening to this right now, which, Nate, I don't know if you're aware of this. We are a, a very popular um, video show right now. We get plenty of views on the tube. Um, people are not just listening to us. They, they like to watch. <laughs> they're not. They're, not. <laughs> they're getting the content, baby. Um, if, if you are not watching this, by the way, however, Cam Newton is the image that first pops up on this article of potential alternatives to Mac Jones, which is just hilarious. Um, so let's dig into this article here. From uh, It's either Kerry or Kari, K-H-A-R-I, Thompson, on Boston.com. It says here, Mac Jones is hurt, and it's not clear exactly how long he'll be out. The second-year signal caller will likely miss, quote, multiple games, according to ESPN's Adam Schefter. Whether that ends up being a few weeks or a few months hasn't been determined yet. Wow. Either way, the Patriots will have to find another option for now. As Jones recovers from a high ankle sprain, Jones said Monday that he's taking his recovery day by day and focused on getting treatment so he can return. But in the meantime, here's a rundown of Patriots options, options, including notable free agents, practice squad players, and sticking with who they already have. So that's here staying the course. The most likely choice is Brian Hoyer, yada, yada, yada. There's also Bailey Zappi. Nope. Um, notable free agents. The first one to pop up. Wow, we got a list here. Uh, Cam Newton. Nope. The former MVP started 15 games for the Patriots in 2020. While he eventually lost his starting spot to Jones, Newton has experience playing within New England system. He knows what the expectations are, and he might have enough left in the tank to execute. Now, Nate, how do you feel about the second name that pot- potential MFers only listening cannot see? It's um, just fucking you- bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. That's what that is. Yes. The second name on this notable free agents list, Nate, go ahead. No. Why, why, why would you want me to say this man's name? <clears throat> It's not, he's not Voldemort, for God's sakes. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick is not getting an opportunity. Colin anymore. Kaepernick is the second name listed as a potential free agent. He's here. not been in the league for God knows. He's he's not. No. It's been they, six they, years, they, to be exact. It's been 84 years, as they would as Rose would say on uh, <laughs> the Titanic. So this is not happening. That's just it's, it's, that's, that's not happening. No. But he has led a team to a Super Bowl. And the reason he hasn't played is more about his protest than his performance. No, he had a defense that took him to that fucking Super Bowl. I think the last game he played in, he threw for 63 yards, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think it was 40. No, I think it was 40, and I think he had a couple of interceptions. Uh, yeah. so, uh, Mike yeah. Glennon, who, you know, I have a – me and Mike Glennon, we go way back. I don't know if you guys realize this, but long <laughs> necks, we stick together. Um, AJ McCarron is the final potential signing. AJ so, McCarron, I don't know. No, no, AJ McCarron's not. And I hate this is what I hate is how they the the how they describe him. McCarron was the first quarterback to win back to back BC. Listen to me. AJ yeah, McCarron was shit. How about okay? having that on your resume? No, he was shit when he was at Alabama. Okay. He had outstanding NFL talent around him 
when he was in Alabama. Okay. AJ McCarron, there's a reason why he's not a starter nowhere in this goddamn league. The only quarterback I'm going to say that's going to be really, really good when he comes out of Alabama is going to be Bryce Young because he is literally playing with dog shit right now. He is oh, right. nothing. He is nothing around him as far as weapons. Yeah, Bryce Young's killing it. I mean, I, I'm glad Jalen's playing as well as he is, so we're not in that position. But, man, if he's there. It's going to be interesting. <clears throat> Trying to pull up this video. I mean, speaking of Tua, I know we want to. Tua Tonga Vailoa. The Miami Dolphins sacrificed this man on Sunday for a win. Yeah, go ahead and get into it. So, for those of you who don't know or who haven't seen it, on Sunday, the Miami Dolphins played the Buffalo Bills. There was, I think it was like sometime in the second half, late in the second half, Tua takes a little bump. He falls, he hits his head on the turf, he gets up, he's a little wobbly. He's shaking his head, he's trying to clear cobwebs, he takes about two or three steps, and then he falls. As he's getting back up, he's no longer able to stand on his own. His lineman is holding him up at this point. He goes into the locker room at halftime. Third quarter comes, two is back on the field. And the word around the Dolphins is, it was a back injury that caused him to look wobbly and fall. I call bullshit. Okay. That's what I call. I call bullshit because that's exactly what it is. Tua did not have a back injury. Okay. That's a concussion. That is a concussion if I've ever seen one. No one walks like that for a back injury. Okay. It just, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. And for all the people who is believing that, oh, it's a back injury. No, it's not. Okay. They sacrificed this man to get a win. Okay. The Dolphins are. That's bullshit. Extreme bullshit. <laughs> I'm trying to. Did you find it? Oh, yeah, I have that. I uh, Yeah, let me pull that up here for everyone. I'm trying to find the video of Ken Dorsey just losing his shit while, while I uh, pull up the Tua video here. <clears throat> but no. And then the NFLPA decided to launch an investigation. But we, we're going to see what that investigation pops up because uh, it pretty significantly on a quarterback sneak earlier. And so, um, you know, I was kind of with with everyone else. Um, yeah, and that's the bullshit that they're talking about. Oh, it's a back yeah, injury right there on a sneak. Injury. Boom, he hits his head. Um, but, He's, uh, did, he he grabs his head. It was a head yeah, injury. I mean, anytime you see a guy's it's head, a, uh, that's, it was if you've injury. played football at all, no, like you've um, and you've hit your head like that, it fucking the, rings uh, your bell. He immediately injury. grabs um, his head. He don't uh, grab his back. At no point did he ever grab his back. Look, that's wobbly. Look, and now he goes. As he described it, it was like a... Um, yeah, that's he, he, said, that's he should have never came back in that game. Uh, it was like Gumby. Um, you know, I was kind of with with everyone else. Um, I hate he, this. I hate this, head kid, this guy right here. I assumed it was a head injury. Um, that is a head but, injury. Uh, his his legs got wobbly because his lower back was um, completely and uh, loose. And as he described it, it was like, completely what? Wait, his, time to his fuck legs up. got wobbly because his lower back was loose. What the fuck does your wait? What? Hold your on. Back was a little. How do Mike you McDaniels. Back? Let's hear that again. And so, um, you know, I was kind of with with everyone else um, when he when he hit his head on the ground. I assumed it was a head injury. Boom. Um, Grabs yeah, helmet. Uh, his his legs got wobbly because his lower back was um, completely and uh, loose. And <laughs> as he described it, it was like a, um, he, he said his lower back. Uh, it was like Gumby or something. Time, is time, out. Business on time out. Time out. Time to fuck out. I mean, I mean, I mean, you're wood, by the way. Miss Mesh. Anyway, um, he's wow. His lower back caused was, him to get wobbly because his he said his lower back felt Gumby. What the 
fuck did, how did you use a cartoon oh, character Gumby one. as a description of how your back felt? Gumby is what you use. You, listen, your back doesn't feel Gumby. Okay? That shit, if it tight, either you either you fuck it up by like you hurt, you fuck one of your spinal columns up, or there's a muscle in your back that you tear, or that shit tightens the fuck up on you. Your back is Dude, how bad that was awful. Somebody's getting fined, and they getting fined a lot of fucking money. There's no anybody with ah, I found it. Thank God. Anybody with a brain stem. <clears throat> that watched that video knows for a fact that that was a concussion. You as a head coach know that's a concussion. That's part of the reason why Brian Flores is gone. Because I guarantee you, Brian Flores is there, Tua would have set his ass on that bench. There's no fucking way that you're going to tell me that he falls, hits his head, the first thing he grabs, he doesn't roll over. Because if you, you've seen people go back injuries, what they do, they hit the ground, they roll over, they grab their back. Yeah. They don't get up immediately. I used to watch Jeff Hardy do it all the time. <laughs> he falls. When you swanton it, bomb someone, you're going to hurt your back. He His head hits the turf. He grabs for his helmet. It's the first thing he grabs for. He gets up, wobbly as shit. He's shaking his head. You can see he's shaking his head in the video. The lineman still kind of had to hold him up and like, hey, look, go that way. He takes a couple steps and he falls. Your back was Gumby? Or and Gumby? Mike, or even, whatever even, you want, the term you want to use? What? Even Mike McDaniels, like, initially I thought it was a head injury. It's like, yeah, no shit, because it was. Because it was. <laughs> Who the fuck? It was, like, on his, it was on his QB sneak here where he hurt his no, back. kind of with. Where else. he gets right um, the fuck up when he hit his head on the ground, I assumed it was a head injury. Concussion. Um, but uh his his legs got wobbly because his lower back was um completely and uh loose and as he described it, it was like uh he's still grabbing his head. I'm wow, that's he's just still I mean, at one point at what point can you tell me, all right, if your back is hurting you, why um, haven't you grabbed for it yet? He said his lower Look. back. Uh, the other lineman had to grab him. That is shameful to be like, ah, he fell over because his back was loose. Third here. Wow. He's a he looks like a goddamn infant. Come on, bro. That is your quarterback. You said, well, I was with everyone initially when he dude, it was a everyone in the stadium saw there was a head injury. There's even even what's it, what's the guy name? Scott Hansen on fucking on Red, Red Zone. Zone. Yeah, he was like when he saw it, he was like, "Whoa, oh no, that's not." You can see it was nothing about his back. He had a concussion. <laughs> they lied and said he was cleared. I guarantee you, who who was it? Um, I can't think. Of this. Ochoa, what's his name? Goddamn Sam, I can't think. He's got the name. He's one. He's got like he got on TikTok and he was like, "That wasn't a back injury. That was a fucking concussion." Yeah. Was like, because apparently they ask you like three questions to see if you're you conscious or or like you you want you understand where you're at. Listen, if you ask me what day of the week it is, who the fucking president is, or and what fucking whatever the third question is, I can easily get through that. It's so funny you say that because I was joking with my cousin about that on Sunday. I was like, imagine if they just asked him what day of the week it was. Of course it's fucking Sunday. You got your pads on. Yeah. Sunday. I don't know what day it is. <laughs> and then my cousin was like, yeah, but oh, if you get that wrong, you definitely shouldn't go back in the game. Yeah. Like, oh, it's fucking Sunday. I got my pads on. Who's the like president? It's Tuesday oh, off. I know what that is. Can't like, put them back in now. Like, come on, man. Like, there's like the fact that they're the fact that they're saying that it was a back injury. Mm -hmm. Like Stephen A even said, he was like, he said, I'm not a doctor, but that was a fucking head injury. There's there's a head injury. Like I I'm just gonna be honest. Like, I understand why people are suing the NFL when they retire. Oh yeah, CT. I understand it now. For sure. And that shit is bullshit because there's no way you're gonna tell me you hit your head that fucking hard. 
you grab your helmet, you get up, and I guarantee you he was seeing stars. Like, he got up. The alignment had to pretty much direct him where to go, and he stumbles and falls. That is a concussion. Everybody who's had a concussion had that same goddamn reaction, or they didn't get off the damn turf. I also, I do want to be careful not to go too far with it. Like, if, if, I, I, you, you sh- we should give them a tiny bit of the benefit of the doubt, right? Like, if they do have, like, an independent neurologist on the sideline, and they gave him the full test, and he cleared it, I mean, he came back in the game, and they won the game, and he, you know, all that stuff, and he clearly was willing to come back in, so it's like, if all those criteria were met, I guess there's only so much we can complain about. You do, you ever hit your head before, Dylan? Oh yeah. And you know, like that first, maybe exactly the way exactly the way he hit it. I know the, exactly how it feels. The first minute, two minutes, you're wobbly. You're out of it, right? If you give me 15 minutes, I'm gonna be good. But that doesn't mean my fucking head's good. Right, I'm just saying, like, with the rules set up the way they are now, and a guy's free will. That shit made me so mad on Sunday. Like, I think that shit, like, really pissed me off on Sunday. I was just like, how the fuck does he get back in the game? Like, there's no way he was fucking, there's no way he cleared the pro. I mean, I guess there's a way, if you give me 15 minutes and give let me get my shit back together, I can pass it. But there's just no, that. There's no way he got off that field. He got off the field the way he did, and they were okay. They was like, yeah, he's fine. He, it was his back. It was his back, even though he never once grabbed for his. If your back's <laughs> in pain, you're grabbing for your back. Yeah, you're not even walking off the – I can't. I can't. Yeah, I, I can't wait to watch the next UFC fight where someone gets knocked the fuck out and Joe Rogan's like, oh, he must have a loose back. <laughs> I hope so. His back was Gumby. Get the fuck. Get, get out of here, man. God, don't 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 do that. And the crazy thing is that like no one talked about it. Like they kind of talked about it, but I'm like, this is a serious fucking issue. Like, that's we you want to talk about protecting players? Well, let's really talk about let's talk about protecting these players because that's a concussion. If I've I'm not a fucking specialist, but I know a concussion when I fucking see one. And that's for sure a goddamn concussion, but hey. I don't I, I I don't work for the NFL, so you know who talks about concussions? Will Smith. <laughs> Didn't he have a movie called Concussion? He did. And in that <laughs> same game, we had uh, another a little mini event happen. Bill's oh. OC, <laughs> Ken Dorsey was Bro, not happy at the end of the game. He lost it. And he's rightfully so. I'd have threw a temper tantrum too because your fucking receiver is an idiot. How you catch the ball, knowing the clock is running, run across midfield, get to the sideline, stop, cut back in, and then get tackled. You stupid <laughs> asshole. Get out of bounds. And then he gets up and he's like, oh, what do I do? Oh, shit, I got to give him the ball. It's too late at this point. <laughs> So this from, the, uh, from the New York Post and Ryan Glespiegel. Uh, Tom Brady thanks Bill's Ken Dorsey for tablet throwing temper tantrum. Says here, Tom Brady, Brady is happy he's not alone. When Bill's offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey, threw a tablet smashing tantrum as time ran out on Josh Allen and the rest of the unit in a loss to the Dolphins on Sunday, Brady found himself some company. Quote, I'm not the only adult in the entire league that's throwing temper tantrums, Brady said on Serious XM. Let's go this week. So thank you, Ken, for taking me off the hook. And uh, let's catch this here from Field Yates' Twitter account, uh, Bills OC Ken Dorsey, at the end of the game. <laughs> oh, man. Right, he was pissed. Oh, wow. Look at the camera. He was so mad. <laughs> Oh, that's pure rage. <laughs> oh, wow. Listen to me. I'm making everybody, all the receivers, because of that one asshole, got to run the wind spread. <laughs> Y'all got to run till I get fucking tired. You're going to run and run out of bounds. That's what you're going to do. How did do Literally, he catches the ball. He runs across the field. All he has to do is keep running to the sideline. He decides to stop, go back inside, and get tackled. 
And I'm like, why, bro? Go if you go out of bounds, you save time. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck he was thinking, but that's that's the appropriate reaction. That is the most appropriate. The fact that they didn't even flinch, <laughs> they didn't flinch at all, tells me he's done that before. Look, no, look no one flinches. They didn't even look at him. They didn't even look his direction. <laughs> that, that is something that oh, happens man. frequently. That is frequent. That is a frequent tantrum that this man throws. And that is fucking hilarious. And the fact that Brady announced it, commenting on it, I guarantee you this is probably what it sounds like. It's just fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> Dude, that is way too much stress for a guy who went undefeated and won a national championship with the Miami Hurricanes. Bro, he was <laughs> way too much stress. Bro, that shit was hilarious when I saw it. I was like, hey, listen. I, I go through that every Sunday, so <laughs> I understand. Well, I think it's about that time of night we pull up some college football scores, my friend. Oh, this 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 so um let's dive right in. One thing I found interesting, your Georgia Bulldogs did not exactly dominate Kent State. We needed it. We we need we needed that smack to reality. We, What's we, going we, on here? 33-22, 39-22? They, they give up 22 points. And you know what? I'm happy Kent State came to play. I'm really happy those kids came to play because they gave us – we needed – every team needs something like this to happen to them. God every me. team. And I'm happy this happened because hopefully this makes them realize, like, hey, we're not as good as we think we are, so we have to play. We have to do our job. They gave up 90 yards. 90 oh, yards rushing and a touchdown for M. Cooper. I mean, C. Schley, a whole 174 and a touch. Yeah, uh, I mean, seven catches and 106 for this receiver here, D. Exactly. Walker? Exactly. Exactly. Jeez. That's what we did on Saturday. And I'm so happy that happened to us because I guarantee you Kirby Smart wasn't happy about it. And I guarantee you well, that, that was, shit won't happen again. So we got Missouri yeah. this week. Good Lord. How many guys are running the ball for Georgia? Jeez. Bro, Brock Bowers is a fucking – he's – I don't I, – he's a – he's the you, – you, they talk about Kyle Pitts being a unicorn. Brock Bowers, bro, listen to me. You can get this man on a toss sweep, and he runs it 70 fucking yards into the end zone. I mean, that, <laughs> that is crazy, okay? I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, that's Taysom Hill numbers right there. But He took, he took a – one of those little – Fucking wide receivers handoffs and took that shit 70 yards up, 75 yards up the fucking field. Easy. But also, three different guys almost had 10 carries. That's crazy. Yeah, we, we, we Georgia are, we, we, when we, ha- we have running backs, it's definitely running backs. Stetson Bennett, zero touchdowns. Yeah, I know. That's, that's never a good thing. It's never a good sign when he's not throwing touchdowns. Yikes. Yeah, it was it was it was we had we had to earn that game. We we had to earn it. So yeah, hopefully we, we come here. back next week and we dominate Missouri. We had oh, how about my Syracuse Orange baby? Four and O oh, <laughs> taking out Virginia. Damn, they Let's can't even get ranked. Going. Say it again. Say no rankings? Nothing for Syracuse? I know what what the hell is <laughs> look at this. Come on, what are we looking at here? 22-20. Jeez. It's like they're not even they're sleeping on them. Um Toiloa Toilia Tungvailoa could not get it done against Michigan. Yeah, they almost beat them. They beat it. They they I'm li- here's the thing. For anybody who plays Michigan, if you stop the run. You smash Michigan, period. If you no stop the run, game, huh? they fuck no, they don't no passing game. If you stop the run, it's a done get, it's a done deal. Their whole offense is around, it's just it's pretty much surrounded by that, that run game. If you stop the run game, Michigan's Ooh. done. How about this? <laughs> Oklahoma. How about man. this? And they want to come to the, the Wildcats. SEC. And they want to come to the SEC. <laughs> How about the Wildcats taking down the Sooners, sixth ranked? Hey, guess what? 
Tech beat Texas. So I guess the Texans, I guess the Longhorns aren't back yeah. yet. Clemson barely squeaked one out in overtime against the Demon Deacons. Dude, that game was shit. Their defense, both their defenses were trash. Let's see, we got eighth ranked Kentucky. That's a surprise. Uh, pulling one on over <laughs> NIU. <laughs> Everyone's like, no oh, longer just a basketball school, huh? No. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a fucking basketball school. They're not a football school. Got USC squeaking one out over the Beavers of Oregon State. Texas A&M over Pig Suey. Wow, Jed to earn that one. Listen to me, dude. That kicker couldn't miss that kick. He couldn't he couldn't replicate that kick if he wanted to. I missed a wild week of college football here. He, so the kicker for Arkansas, so he kicks the ball. It goes. He hits the top part. <laughs> Of the upright, <laughs> he hits the top part and it ricochets off and goes back into the field. No, like you couldn't replicate that kick if you wanted to. No, <laughs> he dunked it right off the goalpost. Wow. They wonder if they have the. They should have the video. Did they have the video? Doubling digital with the AP. They better got something here. What they got? No, I see. Scroll down. They may have it. Cause he doinked that shit right off the goalpost. Man, you imagine? Nah, <laughs> nah, no cares about that, <laughs> dude. Like literally, like so you so, I I I caught the uh, um the highlights and I was like, how? I'm like, there's like this kick that you can't replicate it. Like even if you're an accurate kicker, there's no way you're you're hitting the top portion, like the fl- like the flat top. The ball hits here. And it ricochets right the fuck off. I was like, I was like, damn, you couldn't push that shit inside a little bit. What so do you think I, of uh what do you think of Jefferson? Huh? What do you think of KJ Jefferson? You think he's the NFL guy? Yeah. 18 attempts for 105 and a touch. No, I mean as far as like uh NFL quarterback prospect, you think he's got a chance in the next level, or you think he's a quarterback or a college quarterback? I have to watch more of his game. Yeah, me too. Me to too. Uh, like right now, from what I've seen, I would just from from the little I've seen, I would say he reminds me of Dak Prescott. But like, you know, obviously Dak's worked out pretty good. So, I mean, he's not gonna be like a first round. He might be that guy. He might be that. He might be that steal of the draft that you find like in the later rounds. So AM squeaking one out there. Uh the Vols taking down the Gators. And not a not a sitting on cloud nine thinking they the shit. No, you're not. You're still you're still a little kid to this division. Oregon 44-41 over Washington State. Ole Miss beats Tulsa 35-27. That, that game was insane. That Oregon versus Washington State. That game was fucking fun to watch. What, did you stay up for that one? Those ones go for like 2 in the morning. No, that was – no, no, that was early in the day. Really? Okay. Yeah, the Oregon-Washington State game was early in the day. Bo Nix is trash, so I'm just going <laughs> to put that out there. Bo Nix is straight trash, and even, you know, he moved to a different time zone, different school, different jersey. It's still the same Bo Nix. <laughs> still the same guy. Still the same guy. Like, he still throws pick sixes when he shouldn't. Luckily, he was able to – they were able to get out of there. This shit here. So we had guns up, huh? <laughs> so I work with a guy that's a Longhorns fan, and I sent him the screenshot with the eye emojis. I was like, he's like, man, I was pissed the fuck off. I was like, I'd imagine. Damn. Because they were talking about, oh, Texas is back. Yeah, y'all ain't back, and y'all want to come to the SEC. Okay. 331 and two touchdowns for D. He Smith. Like, ass is up. Damn. 331 and two touchdowns. This guy, though, I haven't seen a whole lot of Robinson, but what I have, they, what they I have, he might be a Heisman hopeful. He's got something there. Yeah, he might. He he's definitely in, he's going to be in the Heisman talks. Duke is still so a goddamn basketball one. school. B Robinson. Man, the burn just over the uh, Tigers, huh? They got lucky. So at in overtime. Missouri running back was running down the sideline, and for whatever reason, he was this close to the end zone. 
and drops the ball. <laughs> he dropped the ball uh, and it rolls out. I'm like, what the two hands, dude? He had he had the ball in one hand. I guess he was trying to reach out for the goal line and he fucking dropped it. What is this? They got that. <laughs> Middle Tennessee. What is this? What did I miss? <laughs> Middle Tennessee came to play. Dude. <laughs> The hurricanes. The, the, the the U is a joke. Okay, the oh, U is no really? longer the U. It's just it's you. It's 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 just you. It's a lowercase U at this point. They 20, have nothing. They are trash. Twenty fifth ranked Miami losing to Middle Tennessee thirty one to forty five. Middle Tennessee to come out there and play them <laughs> just to get their ass beat. Reed Blankenship's old stomping grounds. My <laughs> God. Let's see what else sticks out here. Yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, there was a couple close games. Um, oh, Minnesota. All Notre over the Spartans. Michigan State is shit. Hey, how about Notre Dame? Okay. <laughs> they beat another basketball school. It's cool. <laughs> right. Anything beats losing to Marshall. I don't understand how they lost Marshall, but hey. How about this score right here? Western Kentucky 73 to zip over Florida International. No. Jesus. That's not where. That's uh, not the fucking score. There's a score. It was. That's not where. Uh, Lane Kiffin doesn't still coach there, does he? <laughs> Jesus. Who? No, no it he's, was a he's score. like an SEC school. It was 98 nothing. Yeah. Wow. It, I forgot who. I forgot what school it was. Um, yeah, they beat this team 98 to nothing. I was like, who the f- like, at what point did you say, like, and then the crazy thing is all their quarterbacks threw for a touchdown. I'm like, at what point do you say, all right, this is enough. My kids have seen enough. It's time for us to go home now. Yeah. Where's the mercy rule? Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Damn. I was trying I to find it. Right sure. Cause I remember what just- <clears throat> that that's 73 to zip though. That's crazy. Holy shit. I, I think that I think that the the NCAA at some point should have a mercy rule. I, I really remember. Really, oh, Stephen F. Austin. They beat the dog shit out of some small school. 98 to nothing. Who they beat? Warner, some NIA school or NAIA school. They beat them 98 nothing. Yeah. Like when it's fifty to nothing, okay, call your dogs off. It's time to call them off. You scored an additional fucking forty-eight points. Like what happened here? Like you got to call the dogs off at some point. And the NCAA got to be like, all right, uh, mercy rule. Let's go ahead and cut this off. There's no sense in continue to beat this team like this. Like that's just demoralizing. If I'm on the other side, if I'm on the other side, like I'm like, what the fuck? A Y'all want to embarrass us? Uh, Jeremiah Trotter went to Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you gotta like help us. <laughs> Don't just watch this massacre. Like, help me out, help us out. Did you watch the Pittsburgh Steelers take on the Cleveland Browns last Thursday night? I watched. I briefly watched some here and there. Did you and watch Tony Gonzalez? Huh? Did you watch Tony Gonzalez in a pea coat and gloves after taking the blanket he was wearing off of him go and interview a shirtless David Njoku out midfield? I did not. I did not see that. That was pretty funny. That was pretty funny because, you know, they have their panel now where it's like only players. It's like one chick and then all players like Richard Sherman, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Andrew Whitworth, and Tony Gonzalez. And they were all making fun of Tony G because he had freaking a coat, gloves, and a blanket with him. And they're all like, didn't you play in Kansas City? What the hell is wrong with you? And he's like, I'm cold. And then he goes out to talk to David Njoku. And David Njoku is literally like just wearing his jock strap out there. I personally, I hope he has a better season. I hope he has a breakout season. Oh, yeah. I hope I hope that game on Thursday was a positive sign for him because I feel like he has the talent. He just... With Baker being there, it was just it was just a done deal. I think Jacoby Percet is gonna be 
I think he's going to finish the season out. I don't think Deshaun Watson's going to get to play. Whoa, whoa. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. What do you mean? He's supposed to be back week eleven. I don't I don't think he's gonna I don't think he's gonna play. Because there's no way this man he's been out of football for what two years? So you're saying you think Jacoby Brissett is gonna be playing so well by that point they they can't even get Watson on the field with that two hundred and thirty million dollar contract. I'm not even gonna say that. I'm just gonna say that they're gonna be in a decent they're gonna be in a pretty well situated. The only way he gets into their season is fucking going under. I don't, I don't, I don't see if the see if the season if the season's going good and Jacoby Brissett is not fucking up. He's he's doing okay. I I don't see them taking him out because you gotta look at it like this: Deshaun Watson hadn't played in almost two years. He played. Three off the on a pre, three games in the preseason, and he didn't play the full games. And now he missed what a, the first eleven games of the season. There's no way you throw him in there because you you want to talk about chemistry. Your chemistry is gonna be fucked. Well, I mean, he did have all of training camp and preseason. You're gonna need more than that. You, no. you gotta have more than that. You because most of the time you gotta look at it. Look, I mean, you gonna you gotta build the chemistry with your receivers. Like you gotta know where this guy's gonna be. You gotta know what this guy is thinking. I don't see them just throwing Deshaun Watson into this. If they do it, it's only gonna be like, hey, we this is us giving the finger to everybody in the whole fucking country. I don't. It wouldn't. It if they're in a good spot, it wouldn't make any sense. Like the shit that's going on with um, the Jets. They already said once Zuck Wilson is healthy, uh, he's going to be a starter. Why? Of course. Of course. He's your first round pick. If things are good, why? I don't understand it. Why? I mean, you're one and two. If if you lose another game, I get it. But if Joe Flacco can get you above, I, I, I don't know, bro. I, there is a, there is a weird decisions for me. There is a weird balance that these owners have to play. It's, it, 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 it's, Exactly what you're talking about. It's how well is the team doing versus how much I invested in this other guy. And it, it's a weird game these guys have to play. It's exactly what happened with the Eagles uh, when they were on their run with Nick Foles. You know, how and, and Nick Foles is playing very well. Carson Wentz is the second overall pick. And if, like you said, nobody's really talking about like if Jacoby Brissett. Nobody expects him to go. Nobody expects him to play well, right? Like we expect him to be okay. But what if? What if the Browns go undefeated until Week Eleven? Like, are you really like? You make a good point. I mean, it sounds absurd, of course, because of course they're not going to do that. But what if? What if they win the next fucking? Eight games? <laughs> Are you right. really just gonna shove Deshaun back in there just because you're paying him all that? And it's it's an interesting question for sure. And I'm sure if you know, I mean, Cleveland's got Atlanta next week, so they'll probably win. I mean, let's, let's be honest here. But uh, <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> I just it, for yeah, me, it's like, a great it would, question. I mean, it's unlikely, but what if it would make it wouldn't it would make a whole lot of sense for me for you to do that. If the team, if the team's good, if the teams is, if they're like teetering around five hundred, below five hundred, cool. But if if he, if, if you are above, if you are like two or three games above five hundred, don't fuck that chemistry up. And the interesting thing about this game was, I mean, Njoku had a big game, but also, I mean, as you see here, one hundred thirteen yards and a touchdown. Amari Cooper, one hundred and one yards and a touchdown, like. This was a pretty big game for the Browns. Hey, you know what's crazy? Lab. I didn't need him to whoop your ass. <laughs> I hope you didn't think I wasn't going to bring that up. Okay, so <laughs> we might as well bring it up. Just so full disclosure for the MFers, Nate and I had our first head-to-head in the uh, strikeout beer fantasy football league this past week. And let's just say... It didn't go well for the me. Team didn't show up. They didn't get off the bus. <laughs> so I At had all. the uh, I had the unfortunate pleasure of drafting Trey Lance in this past draft, and obviously, you know, I no longer have Trey Lance as my starting quarterback. So 
I threw in Kirk Cousins. It was fine. You know, I had a couple other things not go my way. I feel like overall, I have a pretty strong team, but my God, <laughs> Nate's team, I mean, just this was the week. I had what? I had so I had two players on the bench that scored 20 plus points and Devontae Smith and uh Amari Cooper. <laughs> and I didn't even need neither one of them to win. The shit was already out of control. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> and you know what's funny? I'm in it because I have two other leagues that I'm in. And one of the other leagues I beat the other guy, I beat him by 50. Yeah. Just so everyone knows, here's my team in this league. So, yes, I had to start Kirk Cousins. Oh, my God. My receivers well, were out for you. Brandon Cooks, who had a rough week. And DK Metcalf, who scored his first touchdown of the season. I was happy to see that. My running backs are Jonathan Taylor, because I had the first pick in this draft. And Alvin Kamara. I have Jonathan Taylor and Alvin Kamara. (laughs) My other running back is Javante Williams. My tight end right now is Hayden Hurst. But my God, that's a good that's a good team. That's a fine team. And I got stomped 82 Stop. to Stop. 138 <laughs> by Nate's team. He had Burrow. He had Mike Williams. He had AJ Brown. He has King Henry. Aaron Jones didn't do anything and it didn't matter. Dallas Goddard, Drake London. That was the team that just absolutely stopped. So so here's the funny thing. So Joe Burrow didn't do squat. Mike Williams didn't do shit. He had a big game. Who? Mike Williams? Well, how Mike, much did he score? Mike Williams didn't. He didn't do. He didn't score at all on Sunday. He didn't have. They got beat thirty-eight to ten. Yeah, but what he, was his score? He had like, let me see. He had like nine points, if that. So, he didn't do anything. Okay. AJ Brown had a fairly decent game. I feel like you're underselling this. Huh? I have to go back into this now. You're underselling this. No, I'm not. Derrick Henry, he scored a touchdown, so he, I think he, he kind of hit double. The the people who helped me out was AJ Brown, Dallas Goddard, Drake London, and the Eagles defense. Okay, Mike Williams didn't do much. AJ Brown got you almost 20 points. There you go. You're like, ah, AJ Brown, you know, all right. <laughs> Derrick Henry, 25. Jackson Taylor almost only got me 12. Camaro, oh, seven. Yeah, Dallas got to get 11. Drake London with 14. The, I'm telling you, the Eagles defense. And then the crazy thing is to get stomped like that. And then you look at my bench, Devontae Smith had 30. Amari <laughs> Cooper had 23. So if I had them in the game, <laughs> your ass would have been way worse. <laughs> All right, well, back to uh, so the Bears behind Justin Fields and Khalil Herbert. Uh, Montgomery went down in this game early, so Khalil Herbert comes out with 157 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, he's gonna be a hot pickup for next week. Yeah, if you don't right. have him, he's gonna get picked up. I don't think a lot of people realize this. The Bears have a winning record right now, two and yeah. one. Two and one, two and one, Chicago Bears. Texan still looking for a win. I don't know. They're not gonna be able to sustain that offense because Justin Field is running for his goddamn life. Oh, I think Mooney has like minus two yards on the season. Yeah, so and then his receivers. I mean, Economius St. Brown is trying to help out, but he's not doing a whole lot. But they have to hand him the ball. Because <laughs> <laughs> you damn sure can't throw it to him. So, I, I think Chicago, I mean, shit, Chicago, they need a lot. They need a lot to help that team. Like, they're they going to need a fucking miracle to fix They need to be able to push the ball downfield. And right now, whether it's field or protection or both, they, they just haven't. Nah, it's, 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 gonna get, it's only going to get worse as the season goes on. How about Roquan Smith? I mean, dominating in tackles even without the contract. So, 
here's my here's my point. Here's my perspective on this whole contract thing. I understand why they're doing what they're doing. I understand why well, I'm gonna go out and play and show them what. No, fuck that and fuck them. <laughs> if you're Lamar, I'm sitting my ass on the bench. Yep. I'm not sure you you want you want to see you want to see what it's like to be without me. Cool, I'm gonna give you that. I'm not playing this year. I don't want my contract. If I don't get my, I'm not signing no tender. I'm not signing none of that shit. If you get you, you give me my contract, or you gonna know what it's like to play without me. I'll take I mean, the fines. I'll take if, the fucking fines. If you get hurt, I mean that's that, that's it. Yeah, if I get hurt, if I get hurt, now you have the now you have you have the control. You have the power now. If I yep. get hurt, it's a done deal. Yep. No, fuck that. I'm sitting on this bench, and you're going to see what it's like to play without Lamar Jackson. You're going to see what it's like to play without Roquan Smith. That's what it's going to be. I'm not fucking no. I'm going to kick my feet up on my couch. I'm going <laughs> to take I'm gonna take your fines. I'll take your yearly fines. I'll take them. I'll take the weekly fines. But go fuck yourself. I'm not putting myself in a situation. I tear my ACL, and then what? Now I'm asked out on a contract? No. Nah. Go no, nah, you can go handle that shit. Because that's what's gonna happen. That's that's what's gonna happen. Each of those guys could make a decent living with just a Twitch channel. Yeah, easy. <laughs> easy. All you had to do, all you really had to do, your name is Lamar Jackson. You get a Twitch channel and just play fucking video games. That's what T Pain does. You put up, you get a fucking T, you done. You set money. It's easy. It's gonna, you're gonna make a fuck ton of money. Yeah. So I, I mean personally I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't I wouldn't risk my health for it. Moving into the 0 and 3 Raiders after the big trade trying to bring Devontae in hasn't really paid off in the win column yet. Uh, how, how does it look? You bring in Devontae Adams, right? You pay him all this money, and some fucking guy named Mac Hollins <laughs> out score out has more yardage, more receptions, and a touchdown. How does that fucking work? Former Eagle, former Dolphin. How does that work? Nobody knows who this dude was. He's a fucking journeyman. How does that (laughs) work out for you? You, This guy comes in and outplays you. From a basketball school, on top of all that. How does that work? Get the fuck out of here. Headline reads, Titans never trail and keeping Raiders winless 24 to 22. The Raiders is just... Josh McDaniels is a... he's He's another one of those guys who's a coordinator he's not a head coach and their Raiders are going to find that out the hard way these uh these Bill Belichick coaches man something about them They're coordinators yeah something about them this shit here was surprising this shit wow here, this my shit cousin here. and I were shocked I mean if you watch the game I Matt Ryan just... played like dog shit <laughs> he played worse than dog shit I mean, he was getting smacked. He was missing receivers. It was just ugly. So bad. It was an ugly game. The Chiefs look awful. The <laughs> Chiefs are not that good. They are awful. The, Patrick Mahomes looked – he didn't look like himself. The defense, they struggled in a lot of areas. Thankfully, Jonathan Taylor didn't get the breakout game that he usually gets. Yeah, it, thankfully. This game looked ugly. This is worse than a Chicago uh, Texans game. This game was ugly. It was bad, for, like, yeah. And for it to end the way it ended, I was just like, there's no way this is happening. I think Sky Moore, like, he muffed a punt and then let one go behind him on the yes. one-yard line. It was... He muffs the punt. The coach recover. Luckily, I, I think they got a touchdown out of that one. I'm not sure. Then he fucking, fucking – space and his brain leaves his fucking head and he lost the ball of bounce past him and it did get pinned inside the fire. I was just like dude, what the hell? Yeah. So I, I think they might bounce back. I'm not sure because 20 for 35 for 262 and one touchdown. Yeah, that's not that's not Patrick Mahomes numbers. They got to figure and, that out. And still for the Chiefs, I would say anyway no one's really established himself as the number one receiver. And, like, Clyde has been fine, but I wouldn't say he's, like, the number one back by far. I mean, McKinnon still gets plenty of work. The thing is, no one's scared of the Chiefs offense anymore. Your your deepest threat is Miko Hardman. I'm not afraid of him. Yeah. We're not, I, I don't care. Go for it. They Try are, it. Yeah. 
Try they're definitely see. less threatening now than they were for sure. Yeah, try to see. All we all we really gotta do is keep eight in the ball. We gotta keep someone close to the to the line, make sure we can keep that run contained, take care, take Travis Kelsey out, and you gotta hope Juju and the rest of those shit off receivers can beat us. Dude, I'm so mad I didn't find video of the butt punt before we got to this. Oh, the butt punt. Oh my god. I thought the game was over at this point. And I already knew it. In my mind, If I, I like this. If I'm a head coach, we got them pinned at the one. Them turning the ball over on the one-yard line was the worst thing that could have happened to that offense. So I'm like, I'm thinking, if I'm if I'm the coach, it's fourth down. I know they're going to punt it. I'm sending everybody. Fuck the return, man. Bring everybody. Everybody want all 11 of my guys on this line, and y'all better rush that goddamn punt. The fact that he – it was kicked and ricocheted off an ass cheek is hilarious. It's the funniest fucking thing in the world. And then Mark Sanchez, he chimes in. He's like, hey, stay out of my lane, bro. It's like, the fucking bum. Like, I was like, <laughs> yo, his cheeks are going to be sore in the morning. Dude. I had to be bruised. Like, you know the fucking velocity coming off that ball? So for those of you just listening, uh, we got a picture here. Miami's Thomas Morstead punched the ball directly into the backside of Dolphins block- blocker Trent Shurfield during Sunday's game against Buffalo. <laughs> and my God, I mean, he couldn't have kicked this ball more squarely into the ass <laughs> of Trent Shurfield. It is directly as cheeks, all of it. And, this shit, and then the crazy thing, it hits and it ricochets straight in the air. I thought it would have kind of like went under his leg. That shit was straight in there. I was like, man, you lucky that shit went out of bounds and not a fuck. It didn't bounce around. Dude, I was like, when I was like, come on, not the... at that point, you should have tried to like step to the side and kick it, but there was nothing you can do. They they were coming anyway, so there's nothing you can really do about it. And Josh Allen continues his dominant, I mean, fantasy streak for sure. I mean, my God, if you have in fantasy. Wait, how, what did that say? 40, 42 for 63? Oh, uh, yeah, 42. Uh, 63 times? Yeah, wow. Holy There's shit, yeah. no way he's sustaining that all season. <laughs> That's crazy. And he ran, and he was the leading rusher yeah. for both teams? Oh, yeah. He's not going to sustain that all year, bro. That's, that's going to come down to late in the season. And is he healthy? Is he not healthy type shit? Just so, Dolphins. One of two undefeated teams right now, three and out. Who'd thunk? Yeah, they got to play the Bengals on Thursday. That's right. So, I'm excited for the game because the Bengals are finally going to unveil their white and black jerseys. Oh, we've been, waiting for all, we've been waiting for this shit for decades. Yes. We're going to get to see it finally. White Tiger. I'm going. I, I'm going to have to get it. I'm going to have to. I'm going to see if I can find like some pictures once they're really done. Because I got. I got to get. I got to have that as a background. Like that's. That is probably the nicest uniform out of the entire league. It's going to look so cool. I'm very excited for it now that you remind me of that. Hopefully yeah. they don't get their asses whipped in those jerseys. But we should. You know, see. Ocho Cinco is going to be on Twitter all night. <laughs> you know he is because he he's one of them that's been waiting for the shit for like decades. Everybody's been asking for it. Now fucking they gonna release it. And then you release it right now with guys like Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. You got Joe Mixon, Joe Burrow. You got guys like, dude, they're going to make this shit look nice. Uh, Vikings rally past Lions 28-24 on Osborne's last-minute touchdown. So we got another division game here. Vikings hosted the Lions, and they took care of business. Jared Goff is shit. Okay. He's a shit sandwich. Their Lions are throwing the ball. Another team throwing the ball plenty. So 41 far. times. Yeah. And that's because so they they have, I think his name is Jamal Williams. They have him, but DeAndre Swift is dealing with some nagging ass injuries. So you don't really have your run game. If you have to make Jared Goff throw the ball 41 times, you're gonna lose every fucking time. Every time you're gonna lose. There's no reason Jared Goff. Jared Goff is not a 41 type. Guy, he's not someone who should be throwing the ball that often. A couple of injury scares in this game, too. I mean, Cook went down with a separated shoulder, yeah. Amon Ross St. Brown messed up his ankle. So, yeah, and that's that's big. So, oh, I wonder he might be a good pickup because I, I gotta 
I forget. I got to look at that. Because one of my leagues, I have like 18 people, which, yeah, exactly. So you can tell that there's nothing much to pick from at this point. Oh, yeah, that big-ass league. I forgot you told me about that. Yeah, I'm in mean, that shit, yeah. I'm dominating that shit right now at the moment, but when the bye weeks hit, my ass is screwed. Lamar Jackson, I mean, goes off this past week against the Patriots. Five touchdowns. Dude, he's uh, even killing. Though, if you have him, he's killing for your fantasy. Uh, 11 carries, 107 yards, one touchdown for Lamar on top of what he did passing. How about Mac Jones throwing three interceptions? Yikes! I'm st- I'm I'm probably starting to regret it because I was like Mac Jones is probably gonna be the best quarterback to come out of Alabama, but I'm surely fucking wrong at this point. Well, I mean, to this point, you may not be wrong. I I'm mean, uh, if you keep your name out of it. It is honestly, it's the Patriots are like Green Bay for whatever fucking reason. They have a really, 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 really hard time drafting <laughs> drafting skilled players in the first round. Like they have a really hard time doing that shit. That's weird. And I don't fucking understand it. Yeah, the Patriots are horrible at that. Even though Devontae, they didn't draft him, but how about that? 156 yards. That's nice. Oh, he the was nice. Jets and Bengals. <laughs> what a game this was. Tyler Boyd had an awesome catch to where he went across the middle, got smacked by uh, Whitehead. I, I think it's Jordan. Yeah, I, I was like, oh shit! It. I don't know if he's gonna make it. Took that hit and kept going. And T. Uh, Higgins got robbed. I mean, we what's funny about that. that is when it gets compounded. I mean, Whitehead didn't wrap up on that play, which led to the long touchdown by Boyd. And then I think it was the very next series, um, uh, interception goes right through his hands. So it's just one of those. Yeah, Funny how that it, it should have. It should be. It, it should have scored. It should have thirty-five. Because oh, that T touchdown. touchdown? Mm-hmm. That was a touchdown, but they took it from him. I'm like, no, that's a fucking. Like, you can see his toes. Them heels hadn't touched the. I was like, all right, that's cool. We're gonna take that from him now. I can't believe they didn't call that in. No, they called it out, and I was like, that's I'm like okay, cool. But the Jets are. I can see, see, now this is what we were talking about earlier. This would make sense. If, let's say the Jets lose again, right? Okay, now let's get Zach Wilson in. Because at this point, we're we're one in three at this point. You know, maybe we can see if we can turn, we can, rec- we can, you know, fix some shit, but it probably won't happen. So, yeah, let's go ahead and throw Zach Wilson in. Let's see if he, what he can do and call it a day. But if there's a different way around, if it's like three and one, then do you really put him in? So, in this instance, it makes sense for them to put Zach Wilson in. I just, I think Flacco's kept them competitive. Um, He distributes the ball well. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. It's going to be tough to just shove Wilson right back in. How about this near catch by T. (laughs) Higginson? My God. Fucking touchdown. Touchdown. And his, like, and even with the slow mo, you can see, like, his his toes tap perfectly. Oh, to elevate the way he did. Yeah, there's there's a couple guys who posted a slow mo of this. I mean, my God. And it's it's, it's just a perfectly thrown ball. The fact that they was like, oh, no, you got to review that. Look, right here. See, tap. Oh, man. That is a touchdown. What a play. Even if you're slowing, slowing it down, you can see that his fucking toes are, like, right the fuck in bounds. Toes. Yeah. His, his feet hit, his toes hit, then his heels hit. So it's a touchdown. And you got that, you got the, they got the frame by frame shit. You can see that. What's the article say here? Uh, T. Higgins nearly makes amazing TD catch, but falls victim to rule NFL might want to reconsider. What was the rule? Why was he since he, since, since Higgins heels landed out of bounds, the pass is ruled incomplete. 
Where the fuck was his heel supposed to land? His feet, <laughs> his toes were first. Your heels came after it. So I don't understand it. I don't get it. It, like, what? it did so after his toes touched and his heel wouldn't have mattered if it would turn the other way. That, I, don't, I don't get it. Look, you can look at it. It's trash. But such an amazing that's player. Not the best catch of the week. Best catch of the weekend that came from George Pickens. Oh, you would say that. I got to. I got to give him respect. Like, that was – even Odell had the chime in on that catch. See if I can pull that one up quick. It was it was a great catch. I mean, come on. It was a great catch. Like, you, you can't say – I mean, it kind of was more like Odell-esque. It just he didn't score on it. But – Mitchell Trubisky, his days are numbered as starting QB in Pittsburgh. Gotta be right. I mean, absolutely. You, yeah. He missed. You, he missed so many. He missed George Pickens a number of times. He missed a couple other receivers, and like his days are numbered. Like you should have beat Cleveland, but we're gonna be seeing Kenny Pickett here soon. There will be there will be a Kenny Pickett signing sighting real real soon. What about uh, Desmond Ritter? No, 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 Desmond Ritter's not. Desmond Ritter's far from. I, I think what's going to happen is um, we're going to see how Mariota plays out the rest of the year. And I think what's going to happen is they're going to make a decision like, is he is he good? Can he, can he start? Or do we need to stick with Mariota since he only has two years on his contract? Like this year. Right, uh... Who's that Pickens catch you were talking about? This is beautiful. Incredible ball skills. And he says, Quiet. A menace. That's exactly. This is a guy that's known when he was in college at Georgia. Just like, look, that's hands. That is pure hands. And there's nothing you can do about that shit. Not a thing. It's, so, it's just crazy to me how guys can completely change their form from college to the NFL. Like, Pickens, to me, in college, never looked this big. Like, Sony Michelle, to me, in college, never looked this yeah. big as he does now. Like, it's crazy. I, I understand, you know, of course, like, weight room and different regiments and all this stuff. But, man, the NFL, what it can do to your frame is just unreal. Yeah. I mean, and at the same time, you have to because these guys are bigger. If not, you're going to be dealing with a lot of fucking injuries. And, that, and that's that's one of the biggest things is, like, you want to be able to absorb most of this punishment you're going to take. So the Bengals took down the Jets. The Ravens took down the Patriots. The Eagles, I mean, my God. Fly, Eagles, fly. They are becoming quickly becoming one of my favorites. Jalen Hurts is becoming one of my favorite players at this point. Like he's really becoming one of my favorite players. It is interesting that they scored all their points in the second quarter. But hey, you know what? I don't care where you score all your points. <laughs> and your defense looks great. And everybody was wondering, everybody was looking at me for why are you drafting the Eagles defense? Because this is why. That's why. Right there. Listen. Carson, I appreciate everything you did for the Eagles in that 2017 season. Without <laughs> your performance, it's likely. That the Eagles don't don't win the Super Bowl that year, but where we are in twenty twenty two, oh boy, Jalen Hurts. I'm, I'm not gonna say Super Bowl. I'm not gonna say Super Bowl. I can't say that yet. But they definitely win in the division. I don't see the Cowboys being able to stop this this team offensively. I don't really see anybody who can slow this offense down. Cause like they're like between having to defend AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, along with fucking Jalen Hurts and then Dallas Goddard, they are probably the most complete team offensively and defensively right at this moment. It's just fantastic. I mean, Jalen's biggest thing last year was holding the ball too long. He's not doing that this year. He's much more decisive. Um you know, he a few game, a few instances in the first game where he'd roll to his left and it looked kind of funky. But now I think he's got two 300 yard performances under his belt. Yep. Very impressive to go with what the defense has been doing. 
Hassan Reddick finally got involved, you know, and bringing Carson down. So it was awesome. I, I, I just, I'm super happy with what I've seen from the Eagles so far. It's been, it's been I great. Can't wait to play the Cowboys. That's what I really and can't wait for. they are at home this week against Dougie P and the Jaguars. So, oh, this gonna be, oh, that's gonna be a fun game. Yep, very much so. Uh, this game, how about Lavisca Chanel? Bullshit. How about yeah. Lavisca Chanel taking a long TD to the house? This game, the Saints are frauds. <laughs> Everybody was like, oh, my God, they came back and beat the Falcons. Yeah, who doesn't do that? Like, come on. Like, you beat the Falcons, and then you go in, you beat, you lose to Tampa, okay? And then Marcus, Marcus Lattimore gets abused by Mike <laughs> Evans. <laughs> and then you, and then Jameis throws three interceptions in the fourth quarter. And then you go into Carolina – and then you get your shit pushed in by Carolina. This was not a fun game to watch. Not at all. Elvin Kamara doesn't look like Elvin Kamara. He fumbled, nope. which doesn't happen often. Right. He fumbles. They were returned for a touchdown. Elvin Kamara struggled since the season started. I mean, people were hyping up Baker so hard before the beginning of the season. And Baker he's shit. He's, he's been shit. so average, if not below average. That's why when Matt Curl was it Matt Curl? Yeah. When he went down with that injury, I was like, fuck. There goes the Carolina Panther season. Yeah. Cause he had that starting position. Like that was his job. And right. the fact that Baker got it by default, everyone's gonna see why Cleveland let him go. <laughs> yeah, for real. Chris Olave though, well nine for one forty seven. That was nice to see, and he keeps his targets keep going up. So fantasy players get ready. I have him in one of my leagues as well. So yeah, this, uh, those this Jacksonville play. Jaguars, as mentioned before, two and one right now. I mean, thirty eight to ten over the Chargers is nothing to sneeze at. Not at all. But mind you, the they had some injuries. They did. For sure. Joey Bosa, not Joey. Nick Bosa went down. No, yeah, Joey. Uh, is Joey? Okay, so Joey went down with a growing injury. I think one of his linemen went down with a torn bicep tendon, so he's going to be out for the season. Yeah, who knows, when, later. who knows when Joey's coming back because yep. it's a growing, and he was down for a while. Um, Justin Herbert, he has to crack rib cartilage. Mm. Um, so... I don't know. It's going. They gotta. I don't see them getting back to 100 percent no time soon. So, um, and it's just. I mean, talk about like this is the Chargers every year. They're like playoff, definitely going to the playoffs. You know, Super Bowl contenders. And then it's like a few weeks in. We've got so many injuries and everything's just off the rails. They got hit dead. They, they're definitely off the rails. Khalil Mack didn't show up yesterday. Darren James showed up here and there, but nothing major. They got beat. Like, they got torched against Jacksonville. And it was just like, Jacksonville made it look so fucking easy. Yeah. Uh, Devin Lloyd for Jacksonville could easily be defensive player of the year. And I mean, or I'm not, I mean, rookie defensive player of the year and maybe even defensive player of the year if he keeps up the way he's going. Do you think he'll be that Trayvon Walker? Uh, I, I mean the the stats right now, the the pass breakups, the the picks. I mean, he's all over the place. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a close one. Uh, this, Rams over Cardinals. I'll this, admit, didn't watch a whole game. lot of this game. This game was bullshit. Oh, yeah, oh, Kyler Murray is. I don't want to keep using dog shit because I feel like dog shit is. He he's more like. He's like, he's like the juice when you got the runs. That's what he is. He's he's like the liquid shit. Kyler Murray is fucking. <laughs> he, that contract they're gonna. Kyler Murray's liquid shit. They're going to regret signing Kyler Murray to that contract. Kyler Murray looked bad. He looked disor. He looked. He didn't look like he knew what the fuck was going on. Them not having DeAndre Hopkins is making shit even worse. Mm-hmm. Their 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 offense is it's not explosive. Marquise Brown, you, everyone's understanding now why the Ravens traded him. Everyone's like, "Why would it be?" This yeah. is why. 
because he, he had a big not, day. He, come on, man. 100, okay, 14 for 140. Where are your touchdowns at? Like, where I, I need more than that from you. I need the defense to be afraid of you. I need help. You couldn't put it. You 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 did all that extra ass yardage for nothing. <laughs> you did 14 catches. You had 14 receptions and none of them were touchdowns. But you had 140 yards. That that that's like me. That's like a running back having 200 yards with no touchdowns. What the fuck were you doing? Just running from goal line to goal line? What the fuck were you? I doing? mean, it's literally like every catch was a first down. I mean, yeah, like, yards per catch. yeah, like what are you like? No, I need more than that. I need you to do more. Um, when DeAndre Hopkins come back, it's going to be. It may make a change. I'm not sure, but. At this point, that offense looks terrible. The best game of the season, obviously, when they played the shitty Raiders. But yeah. If you look at the other games with the the Rams and who else did they play this year? I can't remember who they played week one. Yeah, I don't remember. But, but if, their defense is just. But uh, if it's, it's atrocious. The defense is awful. awful. It, it's just bad. Everything about them is bad. Yeah. And it starts with Collar and then it goes to Cliff Kingsbury. They're going to figure this shit out, and it's going to look bad. Now, this one, I know you're excited to talk about. Oh, absolutely. I was fucking – I was ecstatic. I was like – and then here's the fucked up thing about it. I was like, we finna choke this lead away. And as soon as I said this, these two dickheads, Marcus Mariota and fucking Tyler Ajir, somehow mishandled a fucking handoff and fumbled the ball, and Mar- Mariota didn't even have time to react. To jump on the ball by that time the Seattle defense had it and it was done deal. So we got here. I have to say my defense played great and they came up when we needed them to. It was a late interception and I loved it. I don't think we're gonna get to see it. That's unfortunate. But it was it was it was a legacy. It was a fun game. Kyle Pitts got his touches. Drake London is really showing up, showing that he is going to be our true number one. Um, About 17 carries for Patterson. Dude. So Arthur Smith says that. So now that now he he's realizing, like, hey, Cordero Patterson is not a fucking running back. He can't keep taking his punishment. So now we got to start rotating our running backs in. Yeah, no shit, dumbass. You should have been doing that. Cardell Patterson ain't gonna make it through the season if he keeps taking that type of punishment. <laughs> but it's good to see that you know Tyler Ajir is finally getting him some touches. Um, the offense looks good. I just need Mariota to start putting the ball in the end zone a little more without his legs. Yeah. I- I'd like to see just more like smooth moving the chains. I mean, things seem hard for the Falcons right now. Every Absolutely. every yard seems very much, you know, we fight for it. And uh yeah, it would be nice to see them just have a nice smooth, you know, bang 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 type of drive. I couldn't believe they even had to review the touchdown for Mariota when he like dove in the end zone there. Clearly he was in, but Yeah, he he clearly was in. And then the fun, here's the funniest thing is that we had an eight minute delay because of a drone. <laughs> Cause I'm watching the game and it's like, oh, we got a delay. I'm like, delay for what? what the fuck is delay? Is it a fire somewhere? And it was like there was a drone hovering over the stadium. I was like, God damn it. I like, which wow. one of you fucking assholes brought your drone from home? <laughs> but like I said, for me, all in all, the game looked good. The fact that we allowed Geno Smith to throw for 325 fathers. It bothers me a lot. Um, Geno Smith shouldn't be throwing for 325. He looks sharp. You know, DK Metcalf, again, got his first TD. We got to fix it. We got. We really have to get a pass. We need a true pass rusher. We need somebody that's going to wreak havoc in the backfield. Because at the moment, we we don't have it. We, we get, we're getting sacks. Don't get me wrong. We're getting sacks. We're getting more sacks than we had last year. Yeah. But – we need someone that can consistently apply that pressure. And, you know, even all that said, even with DK getting his first TD, if you watch the game, it's just so clear how talented AJ Terrell is. Oh, absolutely. 
Even Actually, there was a pass breakup that he he took from DK, and I was like, okay, this kid is this kid is true. Yeah, the Clemson game, everyone still brings up that Clemson game. <laughs> like when his name pops up, they bring I'm like you know what? Fuck y'all. That, that was the Clemson game. It was Justin Jefferson. Who cares? He Where? he's always he's always in the guy's hip. He's always got his hands in position. Like he's just rarely out of position. Absolutely. So hey, I'm good with that. Um, I hadn't heard too much about Casey Hayward um, as far as, like, getting beat, which I guess is a good thing. But I'm not hearing a lot of good things on the other side either. So, but, you know, who knows? We'll see. But I like – I like – I'm liking the fight. I'm liking what we have. I just feel like we need more. If we had Kelvin really, we'd have a really dangerous offense. Yeah, I, it'd be nice. I'd, I'd like to see them, you know – Make a move, you know. The, if they're in contention, if you think you got something going here with your first win. But the thing is, we don't have money. Call up, call the Giants. See what the, you know, Kadarius Tony is clearly not a part of their game plan. Y'all like <laughs> I, want to be out too. I, I don't know. I don't know. There's got to be something somewhere. I, I, I believe it. But, I mean, again, Zacchaeus. I know you hate stop, him. Stop bringing this man's name up. I knew you were going to bring it. As soon as he caught that pass, I was like, this motherfucker. You know, Are you going to make me bring him up? Would you bring up fucking C? Let's see here. Olamade Zacchaeus, two catches for 49 yards, folks. He caught all of his targets. What you do you know? Me, you make me hate this man so much. Better, more than I could say for Drake London. Caught all of his targets. No matter. He said Drake London had a touchdown. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, moving on to the Green Bay and Tampa game. Tampa game, yes. 14 to 12. This was a game that we all expected. Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers. Tightly contested. The Green Bay was dominating Green, uh, Tampa throughout most of the game. Both teams pretty banged up. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, Tampa decided to come alive in the fourth quarter with two late touchdowns. Unfortunately, somebody, I'm not going to mention your names, Nathaniel Hackett, somewhere, somebody was Nathaniel Hackett somewhere, forgot, hey, dumbass, the clock is running. The play clock. Don't get a fucking delay a game on your two-point conversion because guess what? <laughs> now you backed up. To the five yard line, I think it was a five, five or six yard line. Now you have to run an actual fucking play. Where instead of where you were, you're on two, you just hand that ball off to fucking Lenny and let him get in the end zone. And now you go in overtime. Yeah, that was big because I mean, uh, yeah, the, the, the Buccaneers were down for a while. But of course, with Tom Brady, they rallied late in the game, they score a touchdown, they go for two. Initially, they were going to hand the ball off from shotgun, but there was a penalty on the play, and the fucking <laughs> thing gets moved back. And when you know it, they don't convert. They don't convert. It's like so game. anticlimactic. That's that's a Nathaniel Hackett move there. That's <laughs> that's what that is. Like my thing. My here's the fucked up thing for me is the, I don't know. I don't. I can't remember. Like if they had a timeout, but call timeout. Call timeout. Right. Yeah. Call time out. It's not gonna if you have the time out to use, call time out. Stop, you can't take the shit home with you. Call time out. And then regroup. So that way you don't get burned on a fucking two point conversion now that you can't you can't just walk right the fuck in. Because he was in. <laughs> you had that ball off to Leonard Fournette at the two yard line. That's an easy two point conversion. Easy. And Green yeah. Bay wasn't stopping him most of the game. No. Nope. Say lovey for the Buccaneers. I don't even want to talk about this butt cheek ass game. This game was shit. This game was awful. As we mentioned before, the Denver Broncos eleven to ten over the San Francisco 49ers. (laughs) After a safety, a safety ended up being the difference here. (laughs) Otherwise, it would be ten to nine. Jimmy G didn't know he 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 couldn't he didn't know his surroundings, so he just kept dropping back. Like, dude, you're already in the end zone. <laughs> you don't have much ground to take. You're in the end zone already. Like, either either throw that bitch away 
<laughs> or get the fuck out of there. You're in the end zone. The, he plowed you keep. He kept backing up. And then he throws a pick six, which didn't count, but still. You get I mean, the, little, the little headline here says nine three and outs, no touchdown passes. Damn, nine three and outs. So let me see. So they scored their first touchdown in the first quarter, and then they, they were goose egg through two two quarters, the second and third, and then yeah. he'll go in the fourth. Yeah. Your offense is shit. Kyle the Shanahan Broncos never scored a touchdown. Kyle Shanahan got embarrassed in front of his father. And then he's gonna get. He's not. He they're gonna fire his ass. They're firing him. Kyle Shanahan's gonna be back to as an offensive coordinator somewhere, which he should be because he's not a head coach. Ugly, ugly game. I do wonder if it's not just Broncos play calling. I do wonder if that finger injury is still hanging with Russ. I don't, man. I don't. I don't think it is. Yeah, it's just, yeah, probably not, right? It's been there's a, a lot. Of, there's a lot. Their offense just looks. Weird. It's like yeah. between the drop passes from Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, the running backs. No, they're not getting push on the front on the offensive line. They're not. They're not doing much of shit. It's like right. soon as Russ hikes the ball, he's running. Right, he's in danger. And it's just like I, I don't know. Their their offense looks. It looks boring. It doesn't look like it's very creative, and it's just. It looks like they already know what this offense is going to be. And then the defense is just like, you just got to stop it at this point. Yeah. As far as, you know, letting Russ cook, it's been pretty vanilla. Uh, It's it's been terrible. Yeah. Monday night. We had a showdown. We had the Cowboys traveling to New York to take on, at the time, the undefeated 2-0 Giants. Um, and the Cowboys, wouldn't you know it, take care of business, take down the Giants. C.D. Lamb, Cooper Rush. C.D. Lamb goes 8 for 87 and a touchdown. Tony Pollard finishes with 13 carries and 105 yards. Not at the expense of Zeke Elliott because Zeke did end up getting into the end zone. Hey, Zeke, so, I mean. This is your last year as a Cowboy. Quite a game here. This is Zeke Elliott's last, last year as a Cowboy. Tony Pollard's gonna make sure that Tony Pollard's gonna make sure of that. Okay. He's definitely gonna make sure of that shit. Um, I could see that for sure. I could see this that. game. I enjoyed. Uh, I didn't watch a lot of it, but I had one of my other leagues. I had the the guy that I was playing. He had the Dallas defense. So as you know, I was like, I need the I need the Giants to score. Late in the game, Saquon or Saquad as everyone calls him. Takes off 50 yards and scores a touchdown. So I was pretty happy on that one. I was like, yeah, well, I just secured my victory. Dude, so I was excited the other night. I'm like, okay, fucking watching this game. I'm wide awake. It's even on, it's on my rabbit ears. So I don't even have to like pirate this shit. It's going to be totally legit. I'm watching this game. By halftime, I was out. (laughs) I'm just pissed, dude. Like, I'm mad. I'm actually mad at myself for the the you, you can't make it a full, to stay full game, Dylan. A full game? You should be ashamed of yourself. And here we are, you know, eleven thirty Eastern. You can't time. make it right. You could make it through a football game. You should. Be I can't ashamed. do it. You should be ashamed. This is my passion. Shame. And I'm snoring. <laughs> I don't. Time, um, is, time is a cruel, cruel mistress. I have to say this. The Giants look legit. Um, really? Yes. Okay. They're, it was nice to see Saquon have that, that one touchdown run. was like, okay. That's Saquon, looks, Saquon. Saquon looks good. He looks like he's trying to get back to that his rookie year. He's yeah. trying to look like he get back to that, that, that form again. Uh, Daniel Jones... He doesn't look. He doesn't. He don't look as bad as he looked last year. He looks a little bit more comfortable now. His wire, his wideouts are fucking sh- just assholes. All well, of them. That's the thing too. It's hard to evaluate. It is hard to evaluate. Like they have, they've drafted guys. They've spent money, but I don't the guys they spent money on, Kenny Galladay has sucked. The, the draft picks, Kadarius Tony's not even on the field. 
Evan Neal has been terrible. He gave up like four or five sacks last mm-hmm. night. As whipped. So it's hard to bash Daniel Jones as much when he's getting no help. None. And the interception that happened at the end of the game is not on Daniel Jones. If you watch the route, Kenny Galladay is in the frame. He stops his route well before he's supposed to. If he keeps running, he catches that ball in front of Diggs. He oh, stops really? his route. If you watch watch the watch the replay, Kenny Galladay is right there. He all he has to do is run. And I don't know what the route was because it looks like the route was supposed to be an in route. Yeah. Because where the ball was thrown, it looks like the fucking ball he was supposed to run an in route. So either dumbass didn't know the route or he cut his route off and stopped running because Diggs is right there. If he runs, he cuts across Diggs' face, and that's an easy catch. And then the game's still going. But he stops. And I'm like, and there's been a couple plays like that where you watch Kenny Yalladay, and he just, like, gives up on the fucking play. And, like, as a professional, I understand you're disgruntled. And I understand you're not happy. But you're not. You're, you're, you're not helping your case by saying I'm this type of receiver by doing dumb shit like that on TV. No, I mean, when a guy like OBJ gets pissed off, you can give him the benefit of the doubt. Kenny Galladay's had one OBJ's good team. He's not going to – he's going to be mad, but he's not going to be like, all right, fuck this shit. I'm, 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 not gonna, I'm not running this shit. I'm not running this route. I'm not doing this. I'm just going to cut my route off. For no. He'll and be that's fair, too. Period. That's fair, too. But you get what I'm saying. Like, at least he's earned the right to be disgruntled. Right. Absolutely. Kenny Galladay's had one good season. One fucking good season, and then he fucking disappeared. No yeah. one knows where he's been at. Yeah. And then the Giants, for whatever reason, I, I, I just – I got to ask the GMs and coaches and, like, when you say I want a free agent, who the fuck did you? Why would you look at Kenny Galladay? <laughs> why out of all the free agent wideouts? Why would you look at Kenny Galladay? Well, and the thing is too, like if it was after his very productive season, that would have been one thing. But I think they signed him after he was out like the whole year. Dude, he because he was with Detroit for a while, and then then they decided. I think they signed him this off season. He got his big contract this year, this year. I'm like, for what? What the fuck did you pay for? What did he what was his stats in this game? Yeah, I, well they they picked him up last year, but it was after he had played like no games in Detroit. I, he had a really big game. year. He had a really big year. He got injured and the Giants took a gamble and it has not worked out. I'm not taking that gamble. I, I'm <laughs> not taking a gamble on a guy like that. There was so many other pro- Fuck, Juju Smith-Schuster was available at the time. Uh, There's a number of fucking players that was available, but, hey, you know what? It's your money. Now you got to suffer with these consequences. Absolutely. I don't see the – and the thing is, I don't see them finding a trade partner to take that contract because I'm not paying – fuck no. I'm not paying that shit. No, definitely not. And you know what? Um, Let's take a little preview into – before we get out of here, next week's games. (laughs) Let's see. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Dolphins. Next. Dolphins win that game. You think so? Yes. Dolphins. Okay. Dolphins. The Dolphins are a well put together team. Um, offensively, um, Tyreek Hill has a chip on his shoulder, and Eli Apple is his target. And it's 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 he's by the end of the day, by the end of the night, you are gonna need butter, okay? Because <laughs> he's gonna be toast. Like he gonna be that he gonna be the toast that nobody likes that one that <laughs> fucking toasted too long that come out as black as this t-shirt that that's how bad it's gonna be for them. Um, I I'm gonna say the the Dolphins are gonna win it by at least two touchdowns, at least two. So that is Miami going to Cincinnati this Thursday night. You can yep. catch that on Amazon, I'm sure. Um, apparently we have a London game. I'm assuming yep. 9 30 a.m. That's going to be the London game, Saints and Vikings. Two bad teams playing one another. Somebody has to win this game. Um, I'm going to I, I'm going to give it to the Vikings for the simple fact that Justin Jefferson is bound for a breakout game this season. I mean, shit, he's, he had one breakout against Green Bay, and then he's been shut out for the last two weeks. 
So I think Justin Jefferson bounces back. Uh, what's his name? Matson. He's going to take a lot of the. He's he's going to. Oh, yeah. He's going to take a lot of the uh, the snaps for running back. I think I'm going to say Justin Jefferson. They're both going to have a big game against the Saints. So I'm going to have to get up to the Vikings. Not being biased, just Jameis looks like he forgot how to play football. <laughs> and then Elvin Kamara is struggling tremendously. So, Do your Falcons have what it takes to handle the Browns? No. Nick no. Chubb is going to run his – he's going to run on our asses, okay? This, this is going to be bad. This is going to be so bad. Uh, this game Buffalo, is going to be fun. Buffalo travels to Baltimore. How do you feel about that? It's going to be a fun game. Um, Lamar Jackson against Josh Allen. That Bills defense against Lamar Jackson. Um, I'm going to give it to the Bills. Uh, case in point is the Ravens secondary is Swiss cheese. Yeah, they're awful right now. <laughs> they're fucking awful. And, and they, they got names. Up, I mean, it's just they give not... up. They've been giving up a lot of yards. I mean, you look at the Dolphins game. They, uh, they, they've they've given up a lot of yards. Even the game last week, they gave up a lot of yards to Devontae Parker. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna have to give this one to the Bills. Uh, Commanders travel to Dallas. Cooper Rush is playing great. Uh, great ish. He's been great, great for why he's in. Okay. Um, the cow, I think the Cowboys handled the commanders. Um, the Cowboys are going to take that one. I'm going to have to get out today because I don't see them. I, the commanders are, they struggling a lot defensively. I think once they get, uh, what's his name back? Chase Young. Chase Young, once they get him back, yeah. I think their defense may, will improve tremendously. But I think at this moment, it, it's, it, it's going to go to the Cowboys. Um, Seahawks traveling to Detroit. Detroit. Seems Detroit. like an ugly game that could be fun Not by the end of it. Detroit. That defensive line against that shit, Seattle. It, <laughs> it's going to just give it to the Seattle. I'm giving it to Detroit. Uh, Chargers <sighs> going to Houston. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I know. Kind of I, weird I, I want to say Chargers, but Justin Herbert's not healthy. The off, he just lost one of his top offensive linemen. No Joey Bosa. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. The Texans, they're desperate for a win. So I'm going to say the Chargers, but I'm, <laughs> I, I would like to say Texans, but I can't. Not with Davis. Uh, the it's Titans it. and the Colts. My it's God, I mean, bullshit. <laughs> you better off just watching paint dry oh. at this point. I don't even, I'm just gonna say that's a tie. <laughs> Talk about some ugly games this week. I mean, Titans, Colts, Bears, Giants. My God, a shitty, shitty game. The Bears and Giants. I'm gonna give it to the Giants. The Giants are gonna take that game. Um, the Jags. I guess they're better. They're more put together than the Chicago Bears are. Eagles beat Jacksonville. Okay. Don't don't no one don't get too high on Jacksonville because they beat an injured Chargers team. Okay, they didn't have Keenan Allen. They lost Nick. They lost Joey Bosa. They lost their top lineman. Don't do that. Let's not let's not hype them up. Is this Kenny Pickett week? If just if Trubisky struggles, he will be in. He will be in next week. There's no way he. There's no way Mike Tomlin is going to continue to let Trubisky make him look like an idiot. <laughs> It's just no way. You're one and two, bro. What do you have to lose? Baker Mayfield taking on his uh, former backup quarterback at Oklahoma, Kyler Murray. The Panthers. Uh, I'm going to say Panthers on this one. Panthers got to take this one. The Cardinals, again, their offense looks awful. Yeah. They got lucky against the Raiders because the Raiders are out of tackle and fucking overtime. Um. They haven't the Ra the Cardinals haven't shown me enough. How about it's Brian Hoyer traveling to Green Bay? No, Brian Hoyer's not. That Green Bay defense looks dude. That they look scary against Tampa. So <laughs> Brian Hoyer, I'll be saying your prayers because that's gonna be a bad game for you. 
This could be interesting here. This Broncos team that we've been bragging on about, you know, not really having their shit together going to 0-3 Raiders. This this is another one of those games like the Titans and Colts. This is going to be one of those games like nobody really wants to watch. Uh, it's going to be fucking – it's like two special people trying to fucking fight each other with helmets on. It's not going to work. This just this don't work for me. But if I, I have like the Devontae Adams, Patrick Sertain Jr. matchup. That'll if I have to pick, I'm probably going to go with the Raiders. I'm probably going to say the Raiders. The Raiders get into the win column this week. Getting that first that, win. That disoriented Broncos offense. How do you feel about Patrick Mahomes traveling to Tampa Bay to take on the GOAT? This is gonna be a this is gonna be a good game. This is gonna be a good game. Mike Evans will be back. Julio is not gonna be back. I don't see Julio because he they say he got like a torn PCL or something like that. So uh Mike Evans will be back. Um you still got Leonard Fournette. Cole Beasley stepped up a little bit. Scotty Miller. Um this is gonna be I think this is gonna be a tightly contested one. I think that Bucks defense is gonna have to show up for this game. Um, Chiefs at Tampa. I don't know. I, I think I, I I think the Chiefs secondary is it's 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 a little sketchy. It they, is. They've also they've also been giving up a lot of yards. So yeah. if you get Mike Evans in there and he shows out, I think I think Mike Evans. Uh, I think the Bucks take this one. I really like the chess game, the strategic matchup that's going to be played. Um, between Devin White, Antoine Winfield Jr., and Travis Kelsey. Absolutely, that's gonna be that matchup is gonna be fun. They, I think, I think they're gonna do a high low type of coverage on him. I yeah. definitely believe that. And then they're gonna force people like Juju Smith Schuster and Rico Hardman and the rest of those receivers to figure it the fuck out. The running backs going to figure it the fuck out. Like y'all gonna have to help out. And last but certainly not least, Monday night we have a division game. That's the Rams. L.A. Rams traveling to San Francisco to take on the 49ers and Jimmy G putting his foot down on racism. Jimmy G, they, I got to find a new name for him. He's butt cheeks. That's what I'm calling him. <laughs> I just got to call him butt cheeks because there's no fucking way you're going to come out and play well against the Rams defense. Okay, it's just you got blew out. You got blown out by them last year. It's just, it's just no way. No, your butt cheeks. Yeah. Okay, so he's he needs to sit there and just take whatever and get ready to come his way. But 49ers, you know, they're they're like the Debo of last year hasn't really shown up yet. No, not yet. But Hill, certainly not broken out Matthew yet. Stafford has been turning that ball over a lot. Mm. <laughs> he's thrown a lot of interceptions. Yeah, he's put his teams in a, his team in a lot of bad situations. I mean, you look at. The Bills game, and then you look at the Falcons game, and then who did they play last week? The Cardinals? Yeah, they played the Cardinals on Sunday. Like he's he's made a lot of bad decisions. He's he's made some mistakes. And this that Niners defense will make you pay for those mistakes. But their offense with Jimmy Garoppolo back there, their running back situation is they're hurting and running back. So I don't know. It's I, I'm gonna say the Rams. I don't see Jimmy G playing outstanding. Yeah, they're both still looking for rhythm. I mean, Henderson Akers, Jeff Wilson, and whatever else they got going on in San Fran. Cam Akers scored his first touchdown for me on Sunday. Okay. Hey. I was celebrating that. I was so happy. This I was like, I don't have to drop you yet. I don't have to bench you or drop you yet. So you you got another week here. Well, that's how we are going to end it this week, MFers. We're going to celebrate on a high note, talking about Cam Akers. Talking about... Look at that. Talking about a Atlanta win. Must feel good. Nate? Dude, everything. Georgia won. Falcons won. I went 3-0 and in all of my leagues. Come on, man. Mate. You can't, you can't you can't have a better week than that. I'm glad everything's just going so well for you over there in fantasy land and whatnot. Me on the other hand, it's been a struggle. You gotta read <laughs> But that's fine. 
MFers, thank you so much for joining us again this week. We'll be back next week and every week after that. Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 10.30 if you're in the Central Time. Hey, if you're in Florida, you got her Ian Ian coming your way. Um, our thoughts are with you. I hope everything works out well. Whether you're going north, whether you're going south, whether you're staying in place. Hope you're safe. Um, you know what? Nuclear warfare is knocking at our door <laughs> every day, it seems like. So, <laughs> who the hell knows? But if all goes well, we will see you here next Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, MF. Thank you so much, Nate. Anything before we go? No, not at all, sir. Love it. Guys, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.